Wallahi, when you recite the Qur'an and ponder upon it and think this way that Allah is talking to you, I promise you that sooner or later, you're going to start feeling that the Qur'an is actually reading you. It's looking inside your soul. It's telling you about your life. It's telling you what you're going through. And it gives you solutions and guidance. And SubhanAllah Wallahi, you feel an amazing feeling. And that feeling is actually your soul being revived. My brothers and sisters, there are people who recite the Qur'an and approach it with pondering and reflection. And they understand that it's, it's reading them to the point where when they translate it into their life, they start to look at the commandments that are in the Qur'an and its prohibitions and its guidance. And they try to translate it into their life. One of the signs that you are becoming that person is when you find that you have something like a compass. When you hear something that Allah is pleased with, you find that you're drawn to it. When you hear something that Allah is displeased with, you automatically find yourself drawn away from it. Whether it's with your eyes or your hands or your thoughts or your ears or your mouth or your company, subhanAllah. And that is one of the descriptions that Aisha radiallahu anha gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when she was asked what kind of a man was he in character. She used to say, كَانَ قُرْآنًا يَمْشِي بَيْنَ النَّاسِ He was a Qur'an that walked among the people. Don't you want to be something like that? And so that the Qur'an on a day of judgment can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh my Lord, this person, this, this man or this woman, this servant of yours did not abandon me. And I bear witness for them, so protect them from the fire and let me be their guide towards paradise. This is the greatest dream for all of us. And this is our hope and aim, insha'Allah ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, let me recite another verse for you in the Quran, just to illustrate it a little bit further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Allah says, do they, not, do, they, do they not ponder and reflect upon the Quran? Or is it that their hearts have their own locks on them? SubhanAllah, when I first read this verse in my life, it really hit me hard. I thought to myself, what is this verse saying? And why is it talking about some special locks that are on the hearts? And I understood it in two different ways. From one angle, it's saying to me, if you never give yourself a chance to reflect and think about Allah's verses in the Quran, it is an indication that your heart may have its locks on it. And from the other angle, I thought, if you do give yourself uh, the chance to reflect and think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses in the Quran, then the locks that are on your heart will slowly become unlocked. So therefore it's up to me. How am I going to approach the Quran? Am I going to approach it with just reciting very quickly and just getting pages passed or verses passed so that it's as if I'm clocking on and off, you know, uh, concentrating on quantity rather than quality? So I had to reflect upon myself and think, no, no, no. The Quran is calling me to read it with care, with thought, with pondering. Isn't that why the Quran actually came down? Another thing about it is it said, does it have its own locks on it? It's as if to say that every heart has its own locks. Every person goes through different experiences in their life and different uh, things that they read or they're experienced to. And some of us will have our prejudices or our bias or um, approaches or, their, or our own thoughts. Some people approach the Quran really just to debate someone else or to prove to someone else something. You know, when you do that, subhanAllah, we lose the essence of the Quran. We lose that feeling of connect connectedness to the Qur'an and it becomes more about an ego thing, you know, some people. But if we approach it really with humbleness and with care and by really looking at the Qur'an as something that's going to guide me and trying to think about the verses as saying to me, Wallahi, you're going to have a whole new experience with the Qur'an.